In this video, we will cover the Writer's Blocks display. We will introduce you to the main parts of the display and focus on the block panel. This is the Writer's Blocks block panel where you can create your outline by adding blocks. This is what you will see when you start a new document. Writer's Blocks also has a manuscript panel. You can convert your blocks to manuscript and what you have written in your blocks will be written in the manuscript panel. On the Display tab, you see three options that control whether just the block panel is displayed, whether the manuscript panel is displayed, or whether both panels are displayed side by side. When the panels are split, you can use the splitter bar to control how much of each window you see. When you have split panels, only one panel is active at a time. The panel you have last worked in is the active panel. The menus change depending on whether you are working in the block panel or the manuscript panel, and the active menu is displayed here. The blocks and manuscript are independent. What you type in one panel does not update the other panel, but you can update each panel if you choose to do so. So let's return to having just the block panel displayed and take a look. At the bottom, we see the power panel, which is a movable, sizable window. I'll close it for now, but we'll come back to it later in the video. In the upper left corner, we see the Application button. This is where a lot of the standard file operations are. New, Open, Import, export, save, print. Import and export are available only from the manuscript panel, so they are not available and grayed out right now. On the right, we see our recent file list, and at the bottom, we see the writer's blocks options. Okay, let me close this. This is the ribbon menu. Each tab has its own chapter in our user's manual, which you can access by clicking on the Help tab and then the writer's blocks help button. Now let's take a look at the scroll bars. I want to draw your attention to the fact that these do not default to the leftmost and topmost positions. This is because we have a neutral area above and to the left of the column guides where you can drag blocks that don't really fit into your outline. Blocks in the neutral area do not get printed or renumbered or arranged. You can always reposition the display so that the top of the first column is in the upper left corner of the block panel by clicking on the Home icon, which is on the Display tab. Right next to it is the End icon, which positions the display so that the last block is in the middle of the display. Now let's turn the Power Panel on by clicking the Show Power Panel here on the Display tab. So as I said before, the power panel is a movable, sizable window in Writer's Blocks. It displays the current block, so whatever block I'm working on above is also displayed here. If I want a really big window to work in, I simply drag it as big as I would like, and now I have a really big area to type in. Remember, Writer's Blocks is really flexible, so if you want to elaborate in one of your blocks, you can enter as much text as you like, and this gives you a really big area in which to write. The Power Panel is divided into two sections, just like your blocks, so you can enter footnotes here as well, and it is also sizable by dragging the separator bar. Whatever you enter in the Power Panel is simultaneously updated in your block above. The current block title is displayed here. Here we have the automatic options displayed, and you can not only see the status of them, you can actually turn them on and off from here. Gray means they are off, and bold red means that they are on. Let me shrink the power panel down again. On the right we have six common functions. Add block, arrange blocks, home, renumber blocks, previous block, and next block. That wraps up this video tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please contact us at support at writersblocks.com.